Hello guys, I hope you have watched the previous revision videos and this video is about the 10 most important classification which have already been asked in the INICT and potentially this year as well. So let me explain you what kind of questions can be asked and what are the important classifications you have to remember. So the first classification I want you to remember is in the Hinchy's classification. So what exactly is Hinchy's classification? It is the different grades of complicated diverticulitis. So grade 1 is pericolic abscess, grade 2 is pelvic or retroperitoneal abscess, grade 3 is purulent peritonitis and grade 4 is fecal peritonitis. So what happens in diverticulitis is the diverticula which is in the, either the sigmoid colon or the descending colon gets infected and in stage 1 it's only around the diverticula that the abscess forms. Then later when let's suppose this is your diverticulae so in this in stage one the abscess is just around this diverticula so that's pericolic abscess then later this spreads more and it is collected either in the pelvic cavity or in the retroperitoneum so later when the stage progresses then this abscess irritates the peritoneum and there is peritoneal inf infection as well so that is stage three the abscess becomes generalized and there is peritonitis and the last stage would be when the sigmoid colon or the large intestine ruptures and there is fecal peritonitis. So the questions are going to be most likely direct like like a particular finding can be given and he can ask you what is the grade or a CT image can be given and will be asked you to find out the grade like a CT image of a sigmoid colon can be given and there will be some kind of dots near the sigmoid colon or an image of an ultrasound can be given and finding can be the there is pelvic abscess. So what is the hinges grade? So you need to be ready for all kinds of question, the image based and the statement based, right? So let us actually solve an MCQ and understand it this better. A patient with diverticulitis and purulent free fluid throughout the peritoneal cavity on laparotomy, best classified as. So you saw if there is generalized purulent peritonitis, it was hinges grade 3. The inflammation around the diverticula is so much that it, it causes perforation of the sigmoid colon or the descending colon, then it would be hinges grade 4. So the next most important classification would be bismuth classification and all the classification which covers the biliary tree anatomy are really important and I have already made a video on Strasbourg classification you can go and check it out in the short section or I'll leave the link of that in the description box as well so please go and check it out and this is about the bismuth classification and remember bismuth classification is nothing but the E1 to E5 classification of Strasbourg. So there are five grades in Strasbourg, right? A, B, C, D, E1 to E5. So this E1 to E5 is nothing but bismuth classification. So you don't have to read this separately. If you know Strasbourg classification well, then bismuth will be a piece of cake for you. So what exactly is this bismuth classification? This is your right and left hepatic duct. And here is your cystic duct and this is your CBD. So the E grade is when there is complete transaction of the common hepatic duct. And these two that is D and E are severe grades. E1 is when the transaction is more than 2 cm from the confluence. This is the confluence and this is more than 2 cm. If the transaction is less than 2 cm then it's E2. Clear so far? Then E3 is when you have the transaction at the confluence but the right and left hepatic duct are still in contact. So this is E3 that is at the confluence but in contact. E4 is when the confluence is damaged and both right and left are separated or there can be injury to right and left ducts as well. So let's suppose this was your normal and you have an injury like this. So this would be E4 that is injury at the confluence but separating both the ducts or injury to both right and left hepatic duct with confluence. And E5 this is your aberrant right hepatic duct. What is E5? E5 is when there is combined injury to both aberrant right hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct. So this is your bismuth classification which is also same as E1 to E5 of Strasbourg classification. In bismuth this is type 1, this is type 2, this is type 3, this is type 4 and this is type 5. So this is kind of a revision of your Strasbourg classification as well. And there's another classification I want you to remember it's called the Hanover classification. Just remember the name of it. The details have not been asked in INICT but the name has been asked and whenever there is vascular injury along with biliary injury 
if such a classification is asked then the name of that is called the hanover's classification so make sure you remember the three names of classification because these are asked in almost every inicet so let us solve a question to understand this better a post cholecystectomy stricture located at the hepatic duct confluence with involvement of both right and left ducts so there was an injury and it has later become stricture and where was the injury it, it was at the confluence along with involvement of both right and left ducts so the injury involved the confluence right duct and the left duct and you remember which was that right it, it was type 4 of bismuth classification I'll revise this again take a look at this again because the way the question is framed can be entirely different just the image can be given or something like this can be given or match the following type can be given so the possibility endless is i want you to pay close attention to the details so the next classification i want you to remember is called the clavian dindo classification it has been asked a multiple times what is this clavian dindo classification exactly it has five grades and it's the grading for post op complications okay where grade 5 is death so that's easy to remember so grade 1 is you require no intervention for simple complications like nausea vomiting you don't require any intervention right you can just manage it by medications so grade 2 are when you need non surgical interventions like giving a blood transfusion you know administering antibiotics non surgical or you can also say pharmacological interventions like the patient has an abscess the patient has post op fever grade 3 is when patient will require surgical radiological or endoscopic intervention like the patient has developed a pelvic abscess and you need to drain it usg guided aspiration or patient may require a resurgery so grade 3 has two subdivisions a and b a is without ga and b is if the intervention requires general anesthesia and 4 is if the patient requires icu stay it also has 4a and 4b if there is single organ failure if there is b if there is multi organ failure take a look at an mcq to understand it better a post operative patient needs percutaneous drainage of an intra abdominal abscess under local anesthesia so what is the clavian dindo grade you saw here if there was no general anesthesia it was 3a right and and percutaneous drainage is a radiological intervention so the correct answer here is 3a so take a look at the classification again so if the patient had any surgical radiological or endoscopic intervention not under ga then it was 3a the next classification i want you to remember is the forest classification which is an endoscopic grading of a peptic ulcer so what this classification does is it tells us the chances of rebleeding from a peptic ulcer so it has three grades and grade 1 has the highest chance of rebleeding and grade 3 has the lowest this is one thing i want you to remember grade 1 has two that is 1a and 1b 1a is active spurt if you see an active spurt from an ulcer then it's grade 1a if you just see an ooze it's 1b stage 2 has 3 a b c and 3 is a simple ulcer which has a clean base and in such ulcer has the lowest risk of bleed grade 2a is when you see a vessel visible blood vessel but there is no bleed remember in these grade 2 and grade 3 there is no active bleed when you see a question that there is active bleed what is the forest classification so you have already ruled out grade 2 and grade 3 you just have to look for grade 1a or 1b and if you are lucky enough there is just one option so this is one thing i want you to remember 1b is if you see a clot and 1c is if you see a red spot or some irregular spot so remember this forest classification a lot of times an image has been given like an artery was given with an with a spurt and the question was what is this forest classification so if there is active spurt it is 1a so let's have a question to under, make you understand this better an ulcer with a visible non bleeding vessel on endoscopy is forest spurt so the moment you see non bleeding you know 1a is out of the option and you are seeing a non bleeding vessel now take a look at the classification here visible blood vessel which was non bleeding was forest 2a right so that's the option b is the right answer 2b was if you see a clot and 3 is when you see a clean based ulcer the next classification i want you to remember is the asa classification so this is a pre anesthetic classification which helps the anesthetist you know categorize the risk stratification so this question can be asked in anesthesia as well so this has six grades asa 1 2 3 4 5 
and 6. And 6 is a brain dead patient. 1 is a normal patient. So remember the extremities so that you can rule out these from the options. So now you need to remember the middle 4. So 2 is when the patient has disease but he has no functional limitations. Like for example, a patient has controlled diabetes, controlled hypertension. So that comes under ASA 2. So what is ASA 3? It is the disease which causes some functional limitations like patient having uncontrolled hypertension or uncontrolled diabetes. 4 is when the disease is a constant threat to life. Like for example, a patient has history of stroke or transient ischemic attack or a patient has sepsis. So these kind of patient comes under ASA 4. And 5 is moribund patients. These are the patients which have no chances of survival until and unless you do an intervention like ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm or head injury, severe head injury. So a question can be asked like a scenario can be given and the examiner will be expecting you to know the ASA grading. Like for example, take a look at this question. A patient with stable angina limiting ordinary activity. So now you get confused was it 2 or 3. So 2 the patient did not have any limitations but in 3 he had some limitations and if this was at rest then it would be ASA 4 because it's a constant threat to life then right. So the correct answer here was option B that is ASA grade 3. So if the question was a patient with stable angina with, without any limitation for the ordinary activity then it would have been ASA 2 and if the question was a patient is having ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm then it would have been ASA 5. So make sure you create a scenario in your mind, try to grade the patient. The next important classification I want you to remember is the Alvarado score. That is the scoring system which is used in acute appendicitis and I want you to remember a mnemonic known as mantles. So what is this M? M stands for migratory pain, A is anorexia, N is for nausea. T is tenderness in RIF, R is rebound tenderness, E is elevated temperature or fever, L is leukocytosis and S is shift to left. So the total score is 10 and here tenderness in RIF and leukocytosis has a score of 2 and remaining has a score of 1 each. Clinical question can be given like for example a patient is having migratory pain and tenderness in right iliac fossa, the patient has fever, nausea. And loss of appetite. What is the Alvarado score? Or even he can take it another notch higher. He can ask you a question like this. Alvarado score of 7 indicates low probability, intermediate probability, high probability or definitive diagnosis. So what I want you to remember is if a score is more than 7 then the chances are high that it's appendicitis. And if it is less than 4 then the chances are low. And if it is 5 to 6 then it is intermediate. So in this question Alvarado score of 7 indicates yes it's, it's high probability and you need to consider surgery. So the next classification I want you to understand is the Tokyo guidelines which is for acute cholecystitis and it has 3 grades. Grade 1 is a patient having cholecystitis without any other complication. So these patients won't develop any surgical complication and their post-op will be uneventful. And grade 3 is when they have organ failure like anything suggesting high creatinine, deranged INR or patient is in shock, patient requires ICU or patient is having mods, anything like that then it would be grade 3. And in between it is grade 2 like patient has emphysematous GB or gangrenous gallbladder or the duration is more than 72 hours but the patient has not developed any organ failure yet. So what I want you to remember in this is just grade 1 and grade 3. Rest everything would come under grade 2. If the patient is absolutely normal, then it's grade 1. If he has signs of organ failure, then it's grade 3. Usually match the following type of questions or multiple, choose the multiple correct type of questions like which of the following statements correspond to grade 2 or which of the following statements correspond to grade 3 of Tokyo guidelines. So such kind of questions. So I want you to remember this. And to understand this better, this has, here's an MCQ. A patient with acute cholecystitis shows hyp showing hypotension requiring vasopressors and acute kidney injury is Tokyo grade. See here the patient has hypotension. He also has acute kidney injury that is signs of organ failure. So this is Tokyo grade 3. The next classification I want you to remember is the child pug score. The child turcot pug score which has 5 parameters it has a score of 5 to 15. 
what are the parameters citus encephalopathy bilirubin albumin and inr and each of these has score of 1 2 or 3 and how to remember this score exactly because there is a lot of confusion right so i want you to remember just the in between score bilirubin from 2 to 3 albumin from 2.8 to 3.5 and INR 1.7 2.3 so anything less than this that is less than 2 more than 3 less than 2.8 more than 3.5 less than 1.7 more than 2.3 so this is the score and no ascites no encephalopathy would be 1 mild ascites mild encephalopathy would be 2 and severe ascites and high grade encephalopathy would be 3 so the score ranges from 5 to 15 and there are three classes that is A, B and C. The lowest is A, that is 5 or 6 is A. Then 7 to 10 is B and 11 to 15 is C. So now let us solve a question to understand this better. A cirrhotic patient with bilirubin 3, 3 mg per dl, albumin 2.8 and INR 1.8 with moderate ascites and grade 1 encephalopathy. What is the child book class? Let us calculate this. So bilirubin 3, it comes under 2, albumin 2.8, again 2. INR 1.8 again 2 with moderate ascites grade 2 again and grade 1 encephalopathy that is mild encephalopathy 2 again. So the total score is 10 which is B right. So make sure to revise this table before you go to the exam because CTP score have been asked multiple times. So I don't want you to miss this and mild encephalopathy would be grade 1 and grade 2. Grade 3 and grade 4 are severe. This is the point I want you to add. The next classification I want you to remember is the Duke's classification which is seen in colorectal carcinoma and it has A to D and what is A? The tumor is limited to mucosa or submucosa. B1 is muscularis propria, B2 is serosa and C is lymph node involvement. C1 is 1 to 4 lymph nodes and C2 is more than 4 lymph nodes and D would be distant metastasis. So understand this better with the diagram. You have the mucosa, you have the submucosa then you have the muscularis propria, then you have the serosa. If the tumor is just here, then it is Duke's A. If the tumor is involving the muscularis, then it is B1. If it in includes the serosa, then it's B2. And whatever it might be, if there are up to 4 lymph nodes, then it is C1. And if there are more than 4 lymph nodes, then it is C2. So remember this picture so that you can solve any question on Duke's classification better. So a question. A colon cancer invades through muscularis propria into pericolorectal tissue but no nodal involvement. So here B1, B2 was not given so you know the answer is B but if the options were B1, B2 what would you choose because through the muscularis into the pericolorectal tissue that means it has also invaded the serosa right. So it would be B2 and do not confuse this with the T stage. The T stage is different this is duke's criteria in the last classification for today that is johnson's classification where type 1 is an ulcer near the lesser curvature type 2 is both gastric and duodenal ulcer type 3 is a prepyloric ulcer type 4 is an ulcer near the cardia and type 5 is ulcer anywhere which is nsaid induced and type 2 and type 3 are high acidic ulcers so that's it for today's video I, I really hope these 10 classification or important scores will, will help you ace your upcoming INICT. So if you found this video helpful, please share this video to your friend as well who is preparing for the INICT. And don't forget to subscribe because the next video is on important surgical signs and some laws or names which I want you to remember for the upcoming INICT. Thank you so much for watching.